if you look over the internet, you'll commonly hear the claim that muscle burns way more energy than fat, which is why athletes burn way more calories, even at rest, than regular folks. But it isn't really because of muscle. Let me explain. Your basal metabolic rate, or BMR, tells us how much energy your body burns to just keep the lights on. It's the energy used to power the basic functions of your vital organs to accomplish sufficient protein and cell turnover to keep your tissues functioning properly and more. If you didn't leave your bed all day and didn't move a muscle, your basal metabolic rate is the amount of energy you'd still burn in a day. You can view your basal metabolic rate as a simple sum of all the tissues in your body or like a household's expenses. Different members of the family spend different amounts of money. But when you add everyone's expenses up, you get your basal metabolic rate. People commonly claim that muscle is highly metabolically active. But is that even true? You may have heard that muscle tissue is three times as metabolically active as fat tissue. And that is true. Skeletal muscle tissue has a basal metabolic rate per kilogram of tissue of 13 calories per kilogram. On the other hand, adipose tissue, or fat, has a basal metabolic rate of only 4.5 calories per kilogram. However, both of these tissues are actually relatively metabolically inactive. Here's a table of the basal metabolic rate by organ for an 80 kilogram male. Do you notice anything? That's right. Both muscle and adipose tissue are some of the most metabolically inactive tissues in the body. Just to give you an idea of how metabolically inactive your muscle is compared to many organs, the basal metabolic rate of muscle is between around 15 to 30 times lower compared to organs. Most of your BMR is actually determined by your high metabolic rate organs. So then, why do people claim that muscle plays a huge part in metabolism? Because it kind of does. While the BMR of a kilogram of muscle is pretty low, we simply carry more skeletal muscle weight than any other organs, like your liver, brain, or your heart. However, sedentary people with high fat-free mass have a lower basal metabolic rate per unit of fat-free mass than sedentary people with low fat-free mass. This is because the ratio of low metabolic rate tissues, for instance, muscle, to high metabolic rate tissues, for instance, the brain, increases, which decreases metabolic rate per unit of fat-free mass. However, most energy expenditure equations fail to account for this and instead predict total daily energy expenditure as linearly increasing with additional fat-free mass. Macrofactor doesn't do this. It uses smart calculations to account for the fact that greater fat-free mass does not linearly increase energy expenditure. Macrofactor is the smartest diet app on the market. Go to Macrofactor and check it out. Up until now, the discussion is centered around sedentary people of varying fat-free masses. However, things look different when you look at athletes. When your muscle grows, some new research suggests something else also seems to happen. Something fascinating. Your organs also grow. Or, at the very least, athletes appear to consistently have larger, heavier organs than non-athletes. This could mean people born with larger organs tend to end up in sports, or, more likely, gaining muscle actually increases organ size alongside it. It's too early to tell for sure. However, heart hypertrophy, for example, is well documented, and so is the phenomenon of larger organs in athletes. In a couple of studies from Japan, scientists grouped male and female athletes into three groups based on their fat-free mass, small, medium, and large size. They found that basal metabolic rate per unit of fat-free mass was basically the same among athletes of different sizes in both men and women. Why? The same scientists conducted a follow-up study to answer that question. What they found was shocking. In athletes with fat-free masses ranging from about 57 kilograms to 85 kilograms, muscle, liver, kidney, and heart mass all scaled linearly with total fat-free mass. So at all body sizes, each of these tissues had a consistent relative contribution to total BMR. The one exception was the brain, which didn't scale as strongly with total fat-free mass. In other words, athletes that carried 50% more fat-free mass also had hearts, livers, and kidneys that were around 50% larger. To further reinforce these results, a previous study by Midorikawa and colleagues also found that compared to untrained individuals, 
sumo wrestlers had much higher basal metabolic rates, but strikingly similar basal metabolic rates per unit of fat-free mass. As you'd expect, their organs were also proportionally larger compared to the untrained individuals alongside their higher fat-free mass. To summarize, higher fat-free masses mean greater metabolisms and basal metabolic rates. Skeletal muscle is relatively metabolically inactive compared to other organ tissues. As a result, in sedentary individuals with greater fat-free mass, the basal metabolic rate per unit of fat-free mass actually decreases. In contrast, in athletes who have more fat-free mass, their organs are also larger and potentially have grown alongside their muscle mass, with the exception of the brain, which keeps their relative metabolic rate per unit quite similar. To be clear, the muscle mass gained probably does play a role in the additional energy expenditure in athletes versus sedentary people. However, most of the increase in basal metabolic rate probably stems from increases in organ size, not muscle itself. To close off this video, the team over at Macrofactor also performed a meta-regression to determine how much faster is metabolism in athletes? How much higher is the basal metabolic rate? When looking at 30 studies in athletes that reported body composition alongside basal metabolic rate, these were the results. The equation derived was compared to the 1991 Cunningham equation, which is also sometimes referred to as the cash mccarl equation, which is considered the gold standard for predicting basal metabolic rate in non-athletes using fat-free mass. You'll notice two things here. One, at lower fat-free masses, such as around 40 kilograms, the predictable basal metabolic rate is very similar, only 2% greater, around 15 to 30 calories higher. However, at higher fat-free masses, this difference grows. At 80 kilograms of fat-free mass, the difference is around 16%, or around 3 to 400 calories difference in basal metabolic rate. The type of exercise or sport and the competitive level of the athletes didn't seem to matter too much. Athletes just seem to generally carry greater organ weight than sedentary individuals, which increases basal metabolic rate beyond what you'd expect. Athletes have a greater metabolic rate than their sedentary counterparts on account of both increased muscle mass and increased organ mass, but it's probably mostly a result of the organ mass. From now on, if you hear someone say, muscle is like a metabolic furnace, you can derisively chuckle, then bask in your intellectual superiority. If you're coaching an athlete or you're an athlete yourself and you want a more accurate estimate of basal metabolic rate, you can use the macrofactor equation instead of a traditional basal metabolic rate calculator that will be less accurate. If you'd like to have a like-minded and educated individual guide your training and nutrition, check out strongbyscience.com coaching to apply for coaching by our team of expert coaches. If you'd like to remain up to date with the latest science around training and nutrition, subscribe to our free email newsletter at strongbyscience.com newsletter. We'll see you next time.